Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today as you've seen a little small preview we are going to be working with a counters and the first thing as we always do well, let's check out the manual what is available for our specific PLC so if you go down here we can see this is a counter section in here and this PLC has a uh, yeah, 16 bit up counters from C0 to C15. Then we got a uh, 16 bit up counter with EEPROM keep. This is something we're going to be talking about in a separate video together with the retentive timers. It's like a retentive uh, uh, counting system. And we also have a C200 tool, C234. Uh, we got a, a 32 bit up down for general use. As you can see down there, this is the sort of accounts you can do all the way from 2 oh Jesus Christ it's a large amount so basically this is more or less for a, a encoders I believe so that's pretty much again that's always what we need to check out make sure what we've got in this a uh, in this PLC so how counters works pretty much works very much similar the same as a uh, the, the timers it's just every time it receives the pulse it counts one up or depending on what time I use but we're gonna be using just just a uh, up a timer today not timer counter so that's what we are gonna be uh, achieving so my little uh, rig down here if you can see in the little video uh, right in the corner down here right in the, in the, in the, in the, the beginning there is a pulsar that a uh, sort of cell sends the pulse pulses back to the uh, PLC and pretty much it, uh, can be used for accounting, i.e. more or less a positioning or encoding. So uh, to start with the counter, so again we are going to create some form of a start, just basically demonstrate just as a little, a little program. So again we do go X3, oh, let's just do that, X3 we're going to count. Uh, call that as a start and uh, let's put the coil in the end let's actually let's first put the stop on it as well x uh, four we're gonna put it for a uh, stop we're basically gonna uh, what did i just do uh, stop basically what we're going to be creating is, is just a small uh what they call the sequence starter so we're going to activate the coil m0 M zero, and we're gonna call it a uh, I'm not sure how to spell that sequence star, and also we're gonna be latching that in here by using oh no that one this guy, I'm gonna call that M zero. So so from there on, so once, once the M0 are going to start for us, again, if you don't know how all this is working, yeah, please do check out the previous videos there. So we are getting to this stage step by step. So from there on, the M0 is, is basically is going to give us an active signal. And from there on, uh, my pulsar on my uh, um, uh, little, uh, in a little training station down there, it's 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 on uh, x2 so uh we are going to call the net contact we're going to say x2 we're going to call the pulsar so uh once we do that and then we are going to create the counter and counter again is a coil so uh we're going to call it we're in the same way as we did the, with the timers we'd say that what timer it is or or and then we can say how many on a constant so uh, we're going to say c0 and we are going to say uh, let's say count to uh, k20 make sure there's always a space in there so, uh, so and then we're going to say uh, count stop basically stop the the counting and a counter as it as itself let's go by itself it needs to be reset so it does require resetting so it does not uh, uh, reset itself so it has to have some form of reset so once m0 will come on x2 will pulse till 20 and what we're going to do with that uh, c c uh, a zero so again it becomes as a as a contact now so we're going to call it a c zero 
And once the contact is going to be reached, we are basically going to uh, activate a, another uh, coil, which we're going to call it an M2. Uh, for this, for the, not M2, M1, uh, for this purpose, it's going to be our another form of stop. And so uh, once the counter will reach to 20, it will stop the belt and pretty much vice versa, just to give you a general just how the counters would work. So, uh, and we do that. So, and uh, for another one, as the C0 reaches, we need to reset it. So we are going to be creating a reset as well. So actually, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show this. If you're going into a simulation, but first, let's don't do that many. So let's take this off. Let's change that one to. Oop. And let's change that one to smaller number, so we don't have to click it so many times. So, so let's let's say two. So there we go. So F4 that one. So if we go to the simulator, always try to simulate the program before you run into PLC if you can. So uh, as we are going to uh, click a on button in here, so system will start, latch on. So as you can see down here now, is the counter is doing nothing because he's looking for the pulses. So we're going to give him a pulse, so he gives it one. And then we're going to do a, another one. And as you can see, M0, M, uh, C0 has come on and M1 uh, is on so if you do it one more time see nothing happens because it's not going to go it's set to go to two and that's all it's going to do now because there is no reset it will not reset it so that's why it's very important to for us to uh, reset the whole uh, uh, create after the cvc what or some form of reset whatever where, wherever you want to want that to be to be reset so if you uh, leave that so we are going to create a um, and go back to the right mode go okay, f10 and we're going to extend this guy in here and we're going to say create a reset function which is going to say rst a space and then you're going to say reset to c0 so once we do that so uh there we go so that now we're going to reset that counter as soon as the counter is reaching a uh, that number two it will activate the signal and uh, do whatever he needs to do. Re remember, this does not have to be here. It can be anywhere as long as the counter gets some, inside, if somewhere when whatever the program you're designing gets reset. So, and because uh, we are uh, activating some form of M1 coil in here, so that M1 is going to become a stop. So uh, we're going to put that M1 in here. So that, whoop, yeah, that, that one in here. What it's going to do is uh, basically it's going to stop our uh, sequence pretty much. So uh, so let's F4 that one. Let's test it. So here we go. So that's in there. So and uh, right now activate the system on. Oh, give you need to do that. So now the system is on. Counter is looking for a. Uh, where did you do that? Counter is looking for a count now, so we're going to say on, off, on. As you can see, he stopped the whole system, pulsed uh, uh, the M1 in here, reset the counter, and also it's briefly activated the M1. So uh, let's leave this and uh, let's go and test that in our uh, live action. And before we're going to do anything, one thing I completely forgot to do is what exactly we are going to be turning on, which we are going to insert a another row, because we are going to be turning on the run belt forward. That's completely what we were forgot to do. So uh, grab that. There we go. And then we're going to say at the same time, you will be activating the Y0. And you're going to be run forwards. There you go. So that's that. So let's compile it. There you go. That's happy. And let's send it on into the PLC. Thank you very much. Put it back on. There you go. So once we've done that, the one more trick I'm going to show you. If you want to see much more compact and see what's really going on much better, you can. You can uh, narrow things down 
by uh, going to options and then go for the light di ladder diagram where it says display count a uh, connection of uh, ladder diagram basically it shows you how many contacts it is a uh, maximum it will display in a visible page without scrolling up and down so it says 11 maximum at the moment that's what you're saying but you can set that we're going to set that down to about uh, 17 so you're showing them a series it is compact at all it's still very well uh, very much all is visible so uh that pretty much will allow us to move this camera a little bit in here before we go to live test and enlarge it so we can more or less see uh, how the system is running and plus as well all the contacts so if haven't done that let's put everything in a uh, monitoring mode as you can see the contact everything is ready to rock and roll so our counter as you can see in here stands at a uh, k20 so it's going to count 20 times before it will a uh, oop, it will stop so let's have a look how that happens and that and that pulse is right down here so a little arm down here so that's the one that uh, it will present in the pulse back so here we go And there we go, we count it to 20 with the pulsar and it will stop it stopped the belt. So we'll do it, do it again. So that's pretty much how of the counter works. So hopefully that is pretty much giving you a gist. What can you do with a counter? The possibilities because the counters is very much used a lot everywhere with the encoders, especially with encoders with high speed cards and with uh, but with encoders you need the high speed counters. So a lot of controllers have them in it, some of the, some have, some don't, so uh, you need to check out into the manual which ones are assigned to what. So this, ladies and gentlemen, will be it. And I already showed at the very beginning uh, the little uh, project that I uh, sort of designed for our young apprentices that they're going to be uh, working on this system. So they're going to have to uh, sort of uh, come up with a good creative way to go uh, start the system and that guy keeps going back and forward using the counting. So, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, hopefully I have ca got across how the counters works. Definitely comment in the uh, description below, uh, not description, in comments below, if you want to want if, if the message didn't get through and you want to see a bit more than it is. I'm trying to narrow this video down to about uh, 12 to 15 minutes because. Uh, Knowing myself, when I watch videos and it goes past 15 minutes, I start getting bored. So hopefully that is not the case with you guys. So uh, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, if you like that video, please smash that like. If you didn't, smash the dislike. And again, comment below. And uh, if you want to follow this series, and there's going to be not just going to be Mitsubishi, but there will be other ones, definitely uh, consider subscribing and uh, clicking that notifications button because there is a lot more coming when it comes down to a program because I'm having a lot of fun myself because there's a lot of things I learned myself on the on the way so uh, yeah so other than that thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video